What up everybody, Nero the Hero here, and I just wanted to show you guys something real quick because this is something I've been kind of fumbling with as far as the settings uh, the last couple of years with trial and error and whatnot. This is just, this is another voice meter type of video, by the way. So um, I'm basically going to show you how to record two different audio sources and then export them as two separate tracks and then later on combine them as two separate audio sources. A couple of reasons you might want to do this is if you are recording an interview where, uh, with somebody else on Skype or even on Discord or any other kind of um, any other kind of communication type of software where you can actually route the audio directly to it. So I'm going to show you with Skype because it's going to be easier to show you with the example because there's no kind of like echo test type of thing in Discord or no real equivalent to it. So yeah, so I'm going to get into it. But before that, I kind of wanted to briefly, briefly go over my settings in voice meter. So basically what I have is I have my first hardware input here with my blue snowball microphone. Second in my, in my second hardware input is actually a virtual audio cable. So what a virtual audio cable is, basically it's just that. It's a virtual audio cable. It's a virtual piece of software driver. I think it, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but if you go to the website here and you can pretty much read the exact description from the people who designed this piece of software. Or I guess it's kind of like an audio driver, pretty much. Yeah, cable audio driver. So it's an audio driver, which basically it basically just acts as a physical input, so it pretends to be like whatever it is I want it to be. So let me show you actually. So if I have Skype here, if I go into Tools and Options in my audio settings, so for my speakers or for my output audio, anything that comes through Skype from the other end will play through the cable input, which is going to look like, let me show you, recording devices. So it's going to look like this in your audio settings. So you're not in your actual audio recording settings though. You're not going to set the source to that particular virtual audio cable. This is just so you can route this in through voice meter, if that makes sense. I'm trying not to have it be confusing, but it might be confusing. So if you have comments, feel free to comment below with a question if the setup of this doesn't make sense because I, that's a whole nother video in itself. So just briefly, you have the virtual audio cable, install that and then set that up in Skype to be your speakers. At the same time, you wanna set that up to be your input here in voice meter. That's pretty much all you need to do. That's that, if nothing else, please take that away from what I just said. So anyways, save. And then what you're also going to want is Audacity, which is, of course, a free piece of software you can download. It's a very powerful audio tool. You can use it to capture audio and even edit. Um, the UI is a little, you know, some people would say it's not very user friendly, but I mean, it kind of is if you're used to navigating menus like this and stuff like that. But otherwise, it's not entirely visual. It's mostly text based and stuff. But that aside, uh, I also have my voice meter output going in through here, which is going to basically voice meter output is essentially a mix of everything coming in through voice meter. So yeah, so that's pretty much what you want there. And then as far as the, um, the, uh, input or what I hear, how I hear it back, that's going to be the same thing, voice meter input, which is pretty much that. So. I'm going to start recording here in Audacity. And as you can see, I have the waveform. You can see the visual waveform there. So now I'm going to do the, oh, one, one last thing before I, sorry. Boop. One last thing before I start. So I have Skype going in through here, right? And then I have my blue snowball going in through here, right? So what I want to do is have a way to differentiate these channels later on because I'm going to want them to be on separate audio channels. So the only way to do that in voice meter is to put them, is to change the position. So you basically, because this is going to record stereo, right? You're going to record this in stereo. So you want to set your microphone all the way to the left and you want to set the input coming in all the way to the right. So anything coming through here only comes to the right channel and anything coming through your microphone only comes to the left channel. So now I'm going to start recording. And as you can see, there's my waveform there. And let's do this echo test.
Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. Oh, After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message, message will, will be, be played, played back, back to you. you. This is my Skype message, playing it back, blah, blah, blah. I'm hopefully this comes through and this is a tutorial video recording. So I definitely hope it works. Yeah. This is my Skype message, playing it back, blah, blah, blah. I'm hopefully this comes through and this is a tutorial video recording. So I definitely hope it works. If you are able to hear your own voice, then you have configured Skype correctly. If you hear this message, but not your own voice, then something is wrong with your audio recording settings. Please check your microphone and microphone settings or visit skype.com for... Thank you, Echo. Okay, so I'm going to stop this. So as you guys saw while the recording was happening, my voice was coming in on one channel, the left channel, and then Skype's voice was coming in through the right channel. So we have two different audio channels here, but the problem is right now, if we were to export this, if I were just to go into file and export audio, that would export everything on one channel as an MP3. So we don't want that. So what we do want is to do the following. So you want to select this and then go up to edit and then you can select duplicate or you can also just use the keyboard shortcut, which is control D. And then so that what that does is duplicates your audio. It basically just duplicates exactly what I just did. So then from here, I want to have this channel be all the way on the left. Audio track one. This should be, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we'll find out when we export. And this should be audio track two. So I want this to be all the way on the right. So this is going to export my voice, just my voice on just the left audio channel. And this will export Skype or whatever's coming in through Skype, your communication software on the right channel. So now we can export. But first, what you want to do, because you want to export them separately. So what you want to do is actually export multiple. So do that. And I'm just going to export it to, I'm going to choose the folder I created, which is test audio, export. So that's going to be track number one, track number two. So it's going to go in descending order. So that's one, that's two, and then if you had more, it'd be three, four, five, so on and so forth. Okay. Successfully exported. Sweet. So now I can minimize that. Minimize that. Jump into here. Track and track two. So this should be my audio. Now I'm going to start recording. And as you can see, there's my waveform there. And let's do this echo test. Oh. Message will be played back to you. This is my... So if you remember but back uh, when I was actually doing that, I was talking at the same time Skype was. So played back to you. You can only hear my voice this right This is now. my Skype message, playing it back. Oh. Message will be played back to you. So around here is this where is Skype was uh, came in. So let's open this one. Sure. You're on here, I think. We Hello, go. welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. And that's where I started talking. As you can see, there's, or as you can hear or not hear, <laughs> there's nothing to hear there. So now I can close this and that's pretty much how you do that. So you have two separate audio tracks, but however, um, well actually now that depending on when you actually started um, recording or when the opposite end started recording, because this, both of these tracks should match up. So reasons for you wanting to record both ends of the audio on your end, um, basically reasons for that being would be if the other end isn't able to record their audio or what the reason I always do it is just in case something happens on the other end with somebody if their audio gets messed up or something like that at least I have a backup and as you can probably hear in the let's see playing it back blah 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 and hopefully that's the this. that's the playback from the Skype that this, it, this is going basically through Skype that's the recording basically coming through Skype. So the other end might not necessarily be the best quality, but hey, it's better than losing your audio entirely. So 
in addition to doing the two separate audio tracks, I always like to do a master. So for the master, you can actually get rid of one of these and then just export audio regularly. So then it'll just export one audio track, test audio master, save, okay. Oh, save that to the desktop on accident. So then just drag it in there. And there's that. So I have the master with both audio tracks or both audio channels in one. And then I have one separate audio track. And then I have another separate audio track. So then you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. So for example, if you wanted to take this into Adobe Premiere, let's go back to the desktop and just drag that into there. Audio track one and audio track two. So yeah, as you can see, they both match up perfectly. And I don't understand why it makes that noise every time I expand the audio channel. It's like some weird thing making, it didn't used to do that basically. So let's maximize this so you can see. Um, so this is my audio. Oh, I'm going to start recording. First. And as you can see, there's and then this is where Skype it. comes in. So there you go. You have a perfect visual representation. So even if you did so so for example if you did have your master file and you could sync everything up if somebody had their audio recorded on their end locally which is going to be always going to be the highest quality if you record locally they can send you their stuff and you can just sync it up just based on the waveform in here or i use premiere anyways i'm pretty sure most other non-linear editing programs show you the actual waveform while you're editing. So that makes that a little bit easier for you. So if anything was confusing about this video, I completely understand because it's kind of confusing. There's a lot of stuff that you have to make sure is correct because it's really easy to mess this up, <laughs> especially if you um, are not super familiar with voice meter. Trust me, I've messed up several recordings before and I don't know, I just, just things go wrong. So if any of this didn't make sense, please hit me up in the comments below with your questions. I will do my very best to answer them directly in the comments, or I'll just make a whole nother video just explaining how to set up voice meter to begin with. Because really what it comes down to is if you mess up even one thing in your initial voice meter setup, then it could throw off everything else and it kind of cascades downwards. So yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for this one, you guys. Again, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Uh, until then, until I see you guys in the next video, take care of yourselves and each other. Do something heroic today and demand something better in gaming. Always. This is Near the Hero, signing out. Peace.